This is the Mazda Cosmo. This is the very first rotary-powered sports car, mass-produced. There are at least 1,100 of them were made. Uh, it's Japanese. They were built in 1966 through about 71 or 72. Um, they were not for export. They were Japanese market only. That's why it's right-hand drive. This one belonged to a U-2 pilot in Japan. See, it's still got the Special Force of Japan sticker. Uh, he brought it back to America. He sold it to a guy, and I bought it from that guy. Um, we didn't have to do much to the car. We had to do a lot mechanically. Uh, Body-wise, it's pretty original. A little bit of touch-up here and there. Originally, this car had 110 horsepower. We replaced it with a modern Wankel engine, a little bit more modern, which has about 220 horsepower. Now, if you don't know how a Wankel engine works, let me show you. This is basically your combustion chamber right here. You see this area here? You have a spark plug. This goes around and boom and fires and just keeps spinning in the same direction. It's an actual ad from the period. Look, down on the ground, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's a supercar. It's, uh, it's kind of little Japanese girls in go-go boots and, you know, it's, it's uh, pretty wild. The styling on this car I love. It, it's kind of, in some aspects, it looks like a mid-60s or mid-50s Thunderbird. From the front, it looks like Pininfarina, but it's classical Japanese styling. And it was a full luxury car at the time. It had air conditioning, although this one doesn't have it. You know, adjustable seats, full dashboard, all kinds of neat stuff. But let's take a look at the motor. Now, in just a minute, Bernard will come in, and uh, in the end of the hood segment, he'll explain to you what we had to do to get this running properly. When we got it, the engine was seized up. It had a lot of corrosion in it, so we, we replaced the engine. We used a later model 12A rotary. We tried to get a 13B in here because it makes more power, but we're about that much too short on space. It's an overhauled engine. We put a Weber manifold on it with a Weber carburetor. We had to relocate the oil filter because there was no room down alongside the block for the oil filter. We built our own exhaust header. The front engine mount, we had to make our own engine mount. We made that out of aluminum, machined it on the CNC. We changed the radiator fan. We put a big electric fan on it instead of the engine-driven fan that it had originally. In order to get this all put together, we also used a, a Mazda five-speed transmission with it. We built our new, a new exhaust system right from the header. We used stainless pipes and all the way out to back, we have a stainless exhaust system. Engine is very smooth, has very few moving parts. There's, there's hardly any vibration on this motor. A lot of people rev and do like nine, 10,000 RPM without any problem. The only drawback on the rotary is relatively high fuel consumption. It's very compact. It's a lot smaller than a, a piston engine is for, for equivalent power. I'm gonna take it for a ride now and you really get a chance to uh, see and hear what this fantastic car sounds like. It, it's almost hard to explain what a breakthrough car this was for the Japanese at the time. A brand new type of engine, the first new engine of the 20th century, a wankle, in a brand new all Japanese designed uh, sports car. I love these uh, rear view mirrors that actually work, fender mounted mirrors. I don't know why I don't do this anymore. I always think this looks pretty cool. Uh, but it's time to uh, take it for a spin and you get to see what 9,000 RPM sounds like in a 1970 Mazda Cosmo. Come on. There are some disadvantages to a Wankel or rotary engine. Low torque, fairly high oil consumption, maybe a pint every thousand miles. I don't find it that bad. And the fact that gas mileage is probably 20 to 25 percent less than that of a gasoline car. The advantages, uh, extremely lightweight, very, very smooth, they rev all day, and they're a lot of fun. I, I, just like, I just like the smoothness. I love the fact that you can hit nine grand, 9,500 RPM all day long in these things, and, and they seem to relish it. You know, when I was a kid, Mazda had a commercial where a piston engine goes chunk, 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 rotary engine goes and they do, they just kind of go This car was uh, fairly uh, well equipped for the day. As I mentioned before, you had the optional uh, map light. You had a uh, full heater, AM, FM radio. Air conditioning was an option. Oh, this one doesn't have it. And my favorite thing of sports cars of the 60s, a real wood steering wheel. Much like the Mura, this came with a wood uh, steering wheel as well. Everything is nicely placed. The ergonomics are, are, are pretty good on the car. 
Obviously, it's in kilometers, not uh, miles per hour. The advantages of kilometers, when you hit 100, your friends think, you're going 100, when you're really only going like 58. If you have a rotary engine, you never, ever want to use synthetic motor oil. You always have to use petroleum-based products because of the seals. Uh, any rotary you have, never, ever put a synthetic in because it just, uh, it won't work. You need to use petroleum-based uh, motor oils. 2050 is good. Just don't go synthetic because the engines can't take it. Nothing uh, sounds like Five-speed transmission at a time when most cars had four speeds. In fact, when this car came out, when you got your Mustang or your Corvette, a lot of times they came with a three-speed, especially the Mustang. Then he upgraded the four-speed. The only thing that had five speeds back in the day was maybe exotic stuff like Ferraris and Maseratis and of course Alfa Romeo. The disadvantage of a Cosmo of course is there are no parts available because I believe there are only three of them in the, in the United States. And I think this is the only one that seems regularly used. Like I said, they love the rev. That's half the fun of these things. Love that sound. I can't say it enough. You know, it's fun to be able to use a light car and use all the horsepower available. That's what makes the car endearing. You know, modern cars, much as I like your Corvettes and everything, God, they're so fast and they're so powerful, you find yourself doing 150 miles an hour. You know, something like this is so much fun between 60 and 100 because you're right in the power band and you've got so much power and it makes just the right noises. And it handles pretty good too. much better than the MGs and uh, TR3s of the day. The 60s were a great time for Japan. You know, Hondas were flooding the American market. They were introducing all kinds of high revving, small displacement engines that were really efficient and really fast. I believe this was a car that was just a little bit ahead of its time. But uh, I put it right up there with the Toyota GT and it's truly a Japanese classic. As you know, Mazda went on to win Le Mans, a tremendous accomplishment. If you've done anything interesting with a rotary engine, like in your RX-7, or put it in some kind of interesting vehicle, drop me a line, let's put it on my website, I'd love to see it. So I'm sorry it took me so long to get back to you on this one, but I'm glad you got to come for a ride. We'll uh, see you next week.